Well, now what we found out that time of flight sensor in the iPad Pros is gonna be, it gives us a little bit of an indicator of what the iPhone 12 cameras are going to be like. Combine that with some more reports we got from Ming-Chi Kuo today, and we start to formulate a picture on how this photography is actually going to work. Let's begin. So it sounds like there might actually be a little bit of exclusivity when it comes to features and specs to that Pro Max model. So the 6.7 inch iPhone might be getting a few things that the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro will not be getting, which may upset some of you, but I'm fine with it because I know I'm getting the biggest display possible no matter what. I like big iPhones. I don't need the 6.1 inch to be more comfortable in the hand. I just, I want the huge display, okay? I will always take that first. And Quo was saying that there's some type of image sensor shift stabilization technology which takes away that optical image stabilization that we currently have in our lenses and instead pushes it back to the sensor itself which should allow for image stabilization to be possible with the ultra wide lens which is kind of a missed opportunity in my mind i thought it would have been really really cool if apple was the first smartphone with a triple camera setup to have optical image stabilization on each individual lens now ultra wide obviously doesn't really need it that much because when you're zoomed out so drastically you don't really shake the camera as much but i just think for the sake of consistency and trying to make these lens behave like one that was kind of the whole message apple was delivering at the iphone 11 event is they were like even though there's multiple lenses you know they're color calibrated and they're supposed to kind of just behave like they're one lens on the back having sensor stabilization across the whole thing should result in the experience feeling even more so like it's just one lens on the back and not three that you're alternating between which so many android phones with lots of lenses on the back sadly kind of give off that experience because one lens will look drastically different than the regular lens and I think Apple just wants to meet that with consistency and this also goes along with previous reports we got from Quo that the 12 Pro models would be featuring larger sensor sizes overall so that may result in a megapixel increase but given we saw how the Galaxy S20 handled a 108 megapixel sensor I'm okay if they don't go too crazy with it you know there was that one report suggesting that it's gonna have a 64 megapixel sensor on the back but uh, if that comes at a cost of you know what can and stay in focus and low light performance that's okay apple you know you can settle with 12 or 16 megapixels is fine as long as they're good megapixels and not 108 bad megapixels okay we don't need that but later this week actually i'll be unboxing the new ipad pro with its lidar sensor and it's very bizarre because apple usually doesn't add something this major to a product just for the sake of improving something a little bit and that's what it feels like right now so the lidar sensor supposedly helps with augmented reality but i've done those ar kit demos on my phone and ipad and even with one lens it can do pretty fine it can do all right i'll definitely do some side by sides to notice the difference but because we know how apple handles the design to where it's kind of blacked out on the back and you don't see the lidar lens itself it's just kind of a black dot that led to a lot of conceptors out there designing what they think the iphone 12 pro back is going to look like this year and it makes things a little bit weird because the main reason we thought apple decided to make the triple camera on the 11 pro look the way it did was so that all the lenses were equal distance from each other and throwing in this lidar sensor which has been rumored on the iphone 12 pro series has people wondering like how do you accommodate that lidar sensor sensor and still keep the three cameras equal distance from each other my guess is they probably can't and they're just going to try to keep them as close as they can so that's why i believe a lot of these reports of you know the three lenses alongside a lidar sensor in one corner that way it can stay in the same consistent camera module we have on the back right now of just being a simple square in the top left corner but who knows apple is known for mixing things up a bit so they may have that square bump on the back get a little bit larger with the s20 ultra having a camera module as big as it is apple probably wouldn't look like like the oddball out to accommodate an even larger sensor array just so they could have that lidar sensor on the back but my hope after seeing how apple has demonstrated what the lidar sensor is for on these new ipad pros which is not much just augmented reality stuff my hope is that with this lidar technology they can give something exclusive to the iphone experience so that with that 3d mapping they can enhance experiences like bokeh for video mode that way you can have dslr like video quality and because it's apple hopefully it will be ironed out you know autofocus will work okay and obviously help a lot with portrait mode photography and my hope is that they're just not showcasing that on the ipad pro because they know the ipads generally aren't really used for much video or photo options and maybe the software simply 
technically isn't ready yet so lidar in its current state can only help with ar experiences but in the future when the new iphones come out they'll be able to showcase all these new features that lidar is capable of and perhaps even add those features via software to the ipad pro if you want not that many of you would use it or need it but the fact that apple wants to continue with consistency across the lineup i think is really important and my hope is that they can also try to combat the s20 ultra's you know insane zoom with a enhanced telephoto lens on this new iphone as well because i think a lot of people were impressed with the ultra wide in the regular lens in the night mode but they felt like the telephoto lens really got untouched and it's basically the same as last year so if they allowed the telephoto lens to zoom in even more or updated the sharpness of the standard lens so that you could get away with more digital zooming if you don't want to zoom in four or five x but the sensor shift stabilization should be really interesting to see demonstrated on the next iphone how they accommodate lidar as well will make the back of the iphone look even weirder so if you were hoping cameras on the back of your phone would look more natural and more normal uh sorry doesn't look like companies are heading in that way but what do you guys think of these renders and these concepts feel free to hit me up over on twitter join my discord if you want to talk more about it there but to give you one last glimmer of hope there are a few somewhat reliable analysts suggesting that the iphone 12 series is still on track to come out at its normal time as the rest of the iphones have in the past at a september event and then shipping a couple weeks later of course time will tell if that ends up being correct or not but hey might not be delayed after all this is your apple sheep here i'll see you in the next one